Welcome to the People Chronicles and Storied Women. My name is Anna Rosen Garin Milch, and I am your host. I am also the author of Lunch with Lucille. Lunch with Lucille is an inspirational novel, and it deals basically with how one woman shares her life's journey so that she can inspire another woman. Here on um, Storied Women, our broadcast is also another way for women to learn about their lives and to teach us about what they are learning along their path. And so today, perhaps we can learn from Kendall Conrad. She's my guest. Welcome, Kendall. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. <laughs> so, you know the question that's coming. I know. Okay. <laughs> what is it that you want people to take away from our little chat today? What, what can we learn from your story? All right. Well, I asked my mom, and I asked my dad, and I asked my best friend, and I asked some other people because I, w not that I didn't know what to say, but I didn't want to say something that has been said a billion times over. Um, and I didn't want to say something cliche or cheesy. So I really took some time to come up with this. Um, and I got to thinking that when you're on the road to success, you're met with a lot of people that make you say, oh, I'm going to prove you wrong, or I'm going to show you, or, you know, when it's it's not an opinion that um, approves of you or what you're doing, we say that, like, oh, forget you, I'm going to prove you wrong. But for me, I've learned that you don't have to prove anybody wrong. The only person you have to prove anything to is yourself. If you can prove to yourself that you can do something, that's that's the only approval you really need is, is your own. Um, so that's what I've taken away from my experience thus far. Great. I like that. You know, measuring, <clears throat> excuse me, measuring our success only against our definition of success. So if right. you look in the dictionary, <laughs> it would say, you look under success and we just say, your dictionary says Kendall Conrad, my dictionary says Anna Rose. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I like that. That's very good. Yeah. That's, it's just, it's how I felt. And I haven't always felt that way. Like oh, okay. I said, you know, like uh, people would say things to me and I'm like, oh, wait, wait, do you see, I'm going to prove you wrong and all this stuff. And I'm like, I... At this point in my life, you, I don't need to. It so, doesn't matter. So tell me what you, where you are at this point in your life when you say that. Is it a little bit of background and then where you are at this point in your life so that everyone can really appreciate who you are? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a country music singer-songwriter. Um, I grew up in Pottstown, Pennsylvania, a uh, tiny, small town, small, small town. <laughs> um, you know, did the public school, elementary school, middle school, high school, graduated, um, top of the class, top 10, uh, went to Ursinus College where I, let me, it's long, I double majored in English and theater, I minored in music, and then I had honors in theater and dance. Okay, <laughs> so would you consider yourself a, an overachiever to a certain point? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, a, a little bit. I've always been like that. Um, it's just this need to do, uh, it's always, I, I don't like sitting around. Um, I don't like things that waste time. Um, I don't like to have fun because I feel like that's time that I could be, sp it could be spent doing something that could help me on my road to success or could put, on, you know, be put on my resume. Um, but isn't, isn't your working and isn't that your fun? I mean, it, it, it is. Yeah, it I is. Mean, it is. Yeah, yeah I it can definitely is. That. I do that too. I mean, I work a lot. I'm on the road a lot. And I find that fun. Well, you know? this is yeah, fun yeah. to me. Yeah, this is fun. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. It is. People Chronicles are a lot of fun. <laughs> We're, it's really. so much fun. Story with, it's <laughs> the most fun you really want to get. <laughs> no, really, it it is. Um, and, you know, other people's definition of fun is stuff that, like, you know, I, I don't take time to hang out with friends a lot or to like take day trips or like go to amusement parks or like hang out at the mall and like things that you know are part of your life and things that you should take time to do because that's important to to connect and communicate with friends and stuff but I don't know it's just I've never it's never been a priority for me I just feel like again it's like I'm hanging out at the mall and I'm shopping and I'm like I could be writing a song right now or I could be, you know, right, you know, doing whatever that that could be more <laughs> important. Yeah. Um, but I think really shopping. knowing that and, you know, what I hear you saying is kind of that, you know, the value of time. Right. And I, that's that's really key. I'm I'm a big proponent of knowing the value. of time. <laughs> I really am, especially when you get uh, 
when <laughs> when you get older, I would say, you know, and uh, so I have maybe, maybe four decades on you, so that my time is much more valuable, much more limited than than say your time. Mm-hmm. So it really, is that there's, there's this very precious commodity of time, and I really can appreciate that. So tell me what it is that you do. Okay, you said you were a country singer. So what do you do, and what have you done? And we know that you're a college graduate. Uh, I just quit. Did you like school? I liked college. You like college? Yes. Oh, okay. But as many people in my business, um, I've learned never re- really liked high school. Um, so it's not a rare thing that I found, which is cool because it helps you um, connect and communicate with other people. It's like, oh, you didn't like high school either. And we're all kind of in the same boat. <laughs> and I think it's kind of funny that we're all like in entertainment. We all hated high school. Uh, <laughs> it's like the the high school outcasts have all gone into the music business um, okay, and theater. So you go into the music <laughs> and theater. Okay, yeah. So you're in theater, right? And yeah. So what are you doing in theater? Okay, well, right now I'm like I'm super stoked. Like I can't believe I got cast. Um, <laughs> it's at the Civic Theater of Allentown. We're doing Breakfast at Tiffany's, and it's the exclusive post Broadway production of this show. Um, Amelia Clark from Game of Thrones was the only actor to play Holly Golightly on Broadway and I'm the second person now to do it that's and I'm exciting. like exciting yeah I I'm like so I can't so that's the Audrey Hepburn role right but the director keeps saying when you promote it make sure you say it's based on the novella by Truman Capote okay. like we're trying to draw a line between um what Capote wanted and what actually happened in the movie because they they um they commercialized it a lot, you know, so that it could be um, more appealing to the masses, I think. And then the novel or the novella, because it's a a short novel, um, it's a lot darker than the movie. Oh, really? Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's it's a lot darker. How can anything? I mean, but you have Audrey Hepburn. I mean, you can have Audrey Hepburn. I know. I know. I know. I'm like, I, I, and I, I adore her. Um, It's, it's just, it's crazy to be cast as that part and to think that, the director or someone thinks that you can do that part. Sure. It's a little, you know, and Amelia Clark, like mother of dragons, like <laughs> what? Um, like it's, it's just, it's to be in that company. It's just like, wow. And there's no one in the country, in the world who can put that, you know, on the resume or who can say that they've done that. It's like wild that I get to say that. So what, what I hear you saying, though, is also that you really appreciate all your accomplishments. Right. Accomplishments. You yeah. don't take them for granted. No, no. And I know, again, going back to, you know, what I'd like people to take away, people, uh, when they talk to me or when I tell them things that I'm doing, they're, like, shocked when, you know, I talk about people not approving of stuff that I'm doing or people not liking the music or people, you know... Um, you know, just when people have bad opinions about you and people are like shocked when I, I say that I've struggled with that, even when I was like really little, I've struggled with that. Um, you mean, wait, you struggled with uh, criticism? Criticism. Crit- right. Thank okay. you. Criticism. Yeah. I'm I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not big on uh, taking criticism. I know we talked about this over the phone before. Um, like I think I was applying to this one reality show and they give you like a questionnaire packet. And one of the questions was, how do you take criticism? And I just wrote, I don't. And that was the the answer to that question. Um, I don't know. I did just, you get the show? Uh, I did. <laughs> it was MTV. It was MTV's Coffee Cat. And I did. I sang Miranda Lambert's Mama's Broken Heart on the show. That was really cool. Um, but I did get the show. So, I mean, it's, you know, I, I take criticism from people that I respect. And I don't respect a lot of people in my personal life who I personally know I don't respect a lot of people Um, I have a very close-knit group of friends that I have that I hold dear and I have a very close-knit family like we're very tight and those people I will listen to because I respect them I have so much respect for them but um, you know other people not so much and you you have to take it with a grain of salt that's been said a billion times um, people's opinions because you can talk to you could talk to the same person on a different day and maybe get a different response. Sure. You know, depending upon mood, you know, uh, an experience that they've had since you've spoken to them. Um so uh, you know, again, you you can't really go by what other people think. Um and then you wind up changing things about yourself or about um what you're doing or your work or in my case my music. Um 
and it shouldn't have been changed. You know, you should have stayed true to yourself. So yeah, that's, I think that you're, 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 that's really important to really stay true to yourself and to really, you know, I I also I write, so I'm in the artsy. <laughs> world as yeah. well and so there's a level of constructive criticism that you get right you know and and you do you have to take it with a grain of salt and but it's also very valuable mm-hmm. i think you know uh i remember when i first wrote uh my first trance my first manuscript and i put it out there and it just got ripped apart i mean just it so sucks. ripped apart and it did but you know what i felt that man if somebody didn't rip it apart i, I mean i had no idea what i was doing unless mm-hmm. somebody ripped it apart so mm-hmm. i went back and you know I just polished it, and mm. I was so proud of the product that mm-hmm. I got because I listened to that person's constructive criticism. But uh, you know, I think that's really vital, at least in my in in my world. Mm-hmm. It is, yeah. And but you go back to what you were saying about you need to really respect the person who's giving it to you, and it's got to be constructive criticism. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, I I struggle with it. Yeah. I mean, I'm very. Uh, <laughs> I'm very hard headed and I'm stubborn and and I'm the type of person that if, even if I'm given really great criticism or really great advice and I don't listen to it and I do something anyway and it happens to um, coincide with the advice that was given to me prior than the experience, um, I'll go back to the person and be like, you know what, I actually went through with it and you were right. Um, I've done that a couple of times, but I like to try and do things for myself um and see what i am i going to get that same um uh outcome you know from this experience as this person has had or maybe i should just try this anyway and see what people think or should i write this song even though it's about zombies and country <laughs> music is like uh, i'm writing a song about zombies but and i've been told a billion times it's a weird topic but i'm just we're going to try it anyway even though people think it's weird and we'll see what happens um well why don't we see what happens we're going to wrap up the show and i'm going to sign off now and before i'm going to ask stop asking the questions i should say and we'll sign off in a little bit <laughs> but i see you've brought your guitar i did I brought so, my guitar. all right give us a little rendition and take us off take okay us out. all okay. right go ahead all right what are we going to be hearing okay this is the first song <clears throat> on my EP, it's called Country Queen. And EP means? EP is something play. (laughs) (laughs) If there was someone here who could quick Google. (laughs) Production assistants, no. (laughs) All right. Extended play, oh my God, thank you. Extended play versus an LP, which is long play, and that's a whole album. Is that what LP stands for? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I take the moon over bright lights and tractors instead of taxi cabs to drive through the night. I take corn over lobster tails and crickets instead of honking whores and siren whales. I want to ride my horse down the interstate and go honky-tonking all night every day. I want to play guitar on a flatbed, chugging go tailgating with my friends, living it up. want to wear my boots till I can't no more and go line dancing two-step and get on the floor. The city just ain't my scene. Hey, 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 I'm a country queen. Said I'm a country queen. <laughs> bravo, Thanks. bravo, bravo. Bravo. Well, yep. I guess uh, that really takes a full cycle because <laughs> <laughs> I, you don't have to prove anything. I mean... Oh, your talent's the answer itself. Thank I, you. I appreciate you coming on today. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Hi, my name is Kendall Conrad, and I'm a country music singer songwriter. Uh, I just did an interview here with Anna Rose for the Storied Women segment of the People Chronicles, and I had an amazing time. There are some wonderful people here. If you want to check them out on Facebook and Twitter, that is the People Chronicles. Uh, If you want to share your stories, feel free to contact them. And thank you so much for having me on the show. Please, please support women and women's voices in the area. Thank you.